Good morning, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne with First Baptist Church of Birmingham, Ohio. Happy Resurrection Weekend. This is the most important uh, celebration among Christians uh, throughout the year. This is, this is more important than any other holiday, certainly more important than Christmas. This is the holiday in which we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But the question comes up, uh, did Jesus really rise from the dead? I mean, that's been the question for uh, for centuries. Is that not right? I mean, we hear skeptics talk about it all the time. And, and did Jesus really resurrect from the grave? Or was this some hallucination? Was this some great myth that's been passed down, uh, much like the old folklores of, of the past? Is this simply a folklore that has taken traction and has... Um, uh, that religious religious people have used to, as uh, as some skeptics say, to uh, keep the masses in line. And I say not. I say that Jesus Christ really did resurrect from the grave. He did it bodily. He did it uh, before uh, hundreds of people, and we'll talk about that. So the answer the question today is: Did Jesus really resurrect from the grave? And we see in Acts chapter 1, verse 3, he says, it says here that there are many convincing proofs that he did, in fact, resurrect from the grave. And so I want to look at that this Easter weekend. I want you to consider the testimony of the, the, the Roman guards. Look what it says here in Matthew chapter 27, 62 through 66. It says, now on the next day, that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and Pharisees came to unto Pilate, saying, Sir, we remember that deceiver said, While he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. It's interesting that they remember that. It says, Command therefore that the sepulchre be made sh sure until the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, He is risen from the dead. So the, the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way, make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. And so the those who were uh, anti-Jesus, those who were against Jesus, those who conjure up the, the lies to have Jesus crucified, now came to Pilate and said, let's make sure that the, the, this body can't be stolen. Let's make sure that the, a lie can't be spread. Let's, let's set a watch, a Roman, a Roman guard around this, uh, this tomb, seal the stone, and uh, at least for another three days, uh, to prove that Jesus' um, prophecy of rising from the dead really uh, is not going to come true. And so they were, they were trying to be preventive at that point. They didn't want this, uh, this malcontent, this, this person that they hated, uh, uh, rumors going about, lies being spread, according to them, that he had risen from the dead when his body had simply been stolen. A lot of people say that today, don't they? They say that Jesus' body was simply stolen. Here, we it is addressed here in, in this passage. And so Pilate ordered a Roman guard in place around the tomb, and that guard is usually consisted of 16 men. Four soldiers would, would guard the tomb. The other 12 would, uh, would, uh, would camp around that area where they would sleep and every four hours they would change places. The penalty for falling asleep while on guard? Death. The penalty for uh, not fulfilling the task that you were given? Death. Listen, these soldiers were the elite of the elite. They were given an assignment by Pilate himself. If, if they had failed in that, in, that, in that task, they would have been killed. They knew they would have been killed. And so they, they, they did their due diligence as much as they could and, and kept that tomb guarded during that time. And so we see here that 
Uh, Pilate set the guard. The guard was in place, and yet the body was gone. Well, so we, we consider the Roman guard, don't we? We also consider the sealed tomb, as we just read. It said, Pilate said to them, You have your watch. Go your way. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made it, made the sepulcher sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. And so not only did they have 16 Roman soldiers around this tomb, but they had this, they had this, the stone sealed. Now, the stone was an enormous size. Uh, and this, uh, it was over two, it's believed to be over 2,000 pounds, so much that the women who came on Sunday morning uh, knew that they could not roll it away, right? And uh, it would take three or four men to, to be able to ro- roll it away. And, but this was a giant st- was a giant boulder in front of this, this cave where Jesus' body was laid, and a cord was stretched over it and uh, fastened on uh, in each end. And it, this, the, the stone itself had a ceiling compound around it. And it also had uh, a stamped, uh, then they stamped it with a Roman seal. Again, um, if that stone, if that seal had been broken by anyone that would have been, uh, that was not authorized to break the, the seal, it was death. And so these were, these were life and death uh, consequences for uh, uh, violating um, this order by Pilate. The guards were guarding it uh, and, and had to fulfill their duty or they would die. Those who would come and try to steal the body by breaking into the tomb would, would surely die as well because they didn't have authorization to do so. And so we have the Roman guards, we have the sealed stone, we also have the burial cloths, do we not? And we, we look at Luke chapter 23, 53, and it says, And he took down and wrapped it in linen, and laid it in the sepulcher that was stone, uh, hewn in stone, wherein never a man before was laid. And so that's an important phrase there, because it's not saying that there, there wasn't another body in there. It was only Jesus. This is a brand new tomb, uh, and and so uh, they they took the body of Jesus down. They wrapped it in linen, and and laid it in this brand new tomb. And you know what? Uh, those clothes were still there when uh, when uh, the the after the stone had been rolled away in the in the. Um, the, the the women and and the disciples came in to look inside, and so uh, you think about people say, well, you know, even if you considered the idea of a grave robber, would a grave robber, if you're trying to uh, steal a body, would you bother with a Roman guard out there after you've pushed a two thousand st- uh, uh, bol- pound boulder out of the way, uh, un- unbeknownst to the Roman soldiers, would you take the time to unwrap the body and leave the uh, leave those uh, those linen cloths there and and then grab the body out of there? Of course you wouldn't. Who would do that? Uh, but the the cloths were still there, and so you have the Roman guard, and you have that that you have the stone. You also have the the linen cloths, and then you have to consider the empty tomb itself. It says in Luke twenty four one through seven, it says now upon the first day of the week. Very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which he had prepared and certain others with them. They found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were perplexed about, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, Why seek ye the living among the dead? He is not here, but is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee, saying, The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful man and be crucified in the third day rise again. 
the skeptics have never been able to explain the, the fact that when Mary arrived on that Sunday mo- morning, the tomb was empty. They've never been able to explain the fact that when J- Peter and John arrived, the tomb was empty. They never could tell us why um, when the disciples came and, and looked in the tomb, the tomb was empty. And when the Jews inspected the tomb, the tomb was empty. When the Roman soldiers finally woke up and realized uh, what had happened and looked inside, the tomb was empty. You think about it. Within a few weeks of the crucifixion, the disciples who were once afraid now publicly began preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. You know, if that body had been stolen, if somehow that body had been taken by grave robbers, uh, you know, the the Jewish peoples could have easily have paraded the body of Jesus Christ themselves and saying, see, he did not rise from the dead. But the fact is, no body, there was no body there because he had resurrected from the grave. So you consider the Roman soldiers, you consider the grave cloths, you consider the tomb, and, uh, and you consider the empty tomb. And then you consider also the, 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 the many appearances of Jesus Christ after his resurrection. We look in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 1 through 8. It says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and in, in wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, lest unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried. And he rose again on the third day, according to the scriptures. And that he was seen of Cephas, and then of the twelve. After that he was seen above five hundred brethren at once, of whom the greater part remain unto this day, but some have fallen asleep. After that he was seen of James, then of all the apostles, and last of all, he was seen of me, also as one born of out of due time. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 8. The, the New Testament gives us over 10, over 10, maybe 12 uh, appearances, separate appearances of Jesus after his resurrection. He was seen of Peter, he was seen of, uh, of Mary, he was seen of sometimes before small groups and then a couple of disciples at a time and, and, and seen of over 500 people at once. At once, and the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 15 said some of those people were still alive as he was writing that very testimony of the resurrected Christ. Paul said, I not only saw him, but there are people still living who saw the resurrected Christ. How do you explain that? How do you um, defend uh, uh uh, uh, saying that he did not uh, resurrect from the grave when so many people, hundreds of people, saw him alive. Again, if they, if 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 they, um, if Jesus was still in the tomb, they could have easily have pulled him out and said, "See, here is the guy who who lied and said that he was going to resurrect from the dead, but he didn't." And then all of a sudden, you have you also you have to consider the lives of the disciples, and how they changed. You know, before the, uh, as Jesus was being uh, arrested, you know that uh, Peter uh, denied him, didn't he? We know that the other disciples came nowhere near him uh, during that time. We know that only John uh, came near uh, the, 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 the crucifixion site, right? All the others were, were afraid. All of the others had forgotten the promises of his resurrection. But a few weeks later, a few weeks later, after they've seen the resurrected Christ, now they, they stood boldly. We look at Acts chapter 2, and, and Peter is no longer denying Christ, but he's declaring the glory of God, and the Holy Spirit comes down, and, and thousands of people 
get saved and, and no longer are they afraid of being arrested. No longer are they afraid of being beaten. No longer are they afraid of, of, of being maligned. They had seen the resurrected Christ and their lives were forever changed. Look at the Apostle Paul on that Emmaus road, that road to Damascus, and he and uh, he was going to uh, persecute uh, Christians. He was going to um, to uh, arrest them, and 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 maybe even be part of the killing, like he was uh, with 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 Stephen. But when he came face to face with Jesus Christ, his life was forever changed. And the same is true for these disciples. They were no longer, they were no longer the same. My friends, as we said before, there are many convincing proofs that Jesus Christ really did resurrect from the grave. What happened to the body of Christ after the death and the burial? My friends, he bodily resurrected from the grave. If Jesus Christ did not resurrect from the grave, we are dead in our trespasses and sins. As someone rightfully said, he's either, he's either a liar, a lunatic, or he's Lord. He is, a, uh, he is either the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. He is the Son of God, God the Son, or he lied to us, or he's a crazy man, but he cannot be both. He is Lord. He is the King of Kings. The old sing, song says it this way. He says, death cannot keep its prey. Jesus, my Savior. He tore the bars away. Jesus, my Lord. Up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph o'er his foes. He arose a victor from the dark domain. He lives forever with his saints to reign. He arose, he arose, hallelujah, Christ arose. Amen? My friends, on this resurrection weekend, are you saved? Are you born again? Have you put your faith and trust in him? My friends, don't let another day go by. Don't let another day go by without falling on your knees and repenting of your sins and putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ today. Beg him for that salvation he promises to give you today. Why don't you bow your head right now and say, Dear Father, in Jesus' name, please forgive me of my sins. I've lived a, a sinful life, and I don't want to live this way anymore. Change me. I repent, and I receive Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I believe that the Son of God died on the cross for my sins. He paid my sin debt, and he resurrected from the grave. Save me now. Save me forever. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen? Amen. Well, this is Pastor Marvin Osborne saying God loves you, and I love you as well, and I'll talk to you soon.